In this video, we are going to optimize the distance from a point to a curve. We're going to find the minimum distance from a point 0, 3 to a curve y, minus, y equals 6 minus x squared. Okay, so first let's um, draw a picture of the curve and the point. So this is a parabola facing downwards. Um, from the negative x squared, and it's shifted six units up. So the vertex is going to be at zero, six. Okay, so there is the parabola, and this is six. And the point, zero, three, is a point on the y-axis halfway between the x-axis and the vertex. So we're looking for, mm, I'm going to guess something over here. This looks like it's probably maybe the shortest distance from this point to the curve. And it looks like there's going to be two answers because the parabola has symmetry. And there's going to be a point on either side of this parabola where the distances are equal to the point zero, 3. Okay, so it doesn't matter which point I pick. I'm just going to pick one of the points, and I'm going to call it x, y. So to solve this problem, we're going to use the distance formula. So the formula for the distance between two points is d squared equals x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So I'm going to plug in the two points I have. I'm going to use x, y, and 0, 3. Um, and I'm also going to take the square root here. So d is the square root of all of this. Um, x2 minus x1, I'm going to say is x minus 0 squared. We'll simplify that in a moment. And y2 minus y1, we'll say y minus 3 squared. Okay. Now, in order to take the derivative and do the calculus for this problem, I first need to write the equation in terms of just a single variable. So I either need to get rid of the x or the y. And that's where the equation for the parabola is going to come in. So I'm going to use this parabola equation, and I'm going to substitute it in to my distance formula. I'm going to get rid of the y, because it's y is already solved for, so that's a convenient substitution. All right, so now I'm going to have distance in terms of a single variable. So it's just going to be in terms of x now. And that's going to equal the square root of x squared. Let's simplify that first um, binomial. Plus, I'm plugging y in there, so I'm going to have 6 minus x squared minus 3 squared. And let's simplify that. d of x is the square root of x squared plus 6 minus 3 is going to give me 3 minus x squared squared. OK, so we have a formula for the distance between the point and the parabola. And now I want to find the minimum distance. So to find a minimum or a maximum, any extrema, we want to find the critical points of this function. So we want to find the places where the derivative is 0 or undefined. So first, I'm going to take the derivative of our function. So d prime of x is going to equal 1 half x squared, oh, let me put a bracket here, x squared uh, plus 3 minus x squared squared to the negative 1 half. Oh, I have a lot of extra parentheses. Whoops. OK. Times the derivative of what's inside. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of this, I'm going to use the chain rule here. So that's going to be 2 times 3 minus x squared to the first times the derivative of what's inside, which is negative 2x. 
All right, so I'm going to rewrite this in, as a fraction. So I'm going to put the 2 from the 1 half in the denominator and then this negative exponent in the denominator. And I'm also going to simplify this, uh, which maybe I'll do right here. I'm going to have 2x and then this is going to give me a negative 4x. That's the 2 times the negative 2x times 3 minus x squared. And then I will multiply that out in my next step. OK, so this is the 2 from this 1 half right here. And then the negative 1 half exponent, well, that's like a square root. And so that's just uh, what I have here, the square root of x squared plus 3 minus x squared squared. And then lastly, in the numerator, I have this, um, 2x. When I multiply this out, I'm going to get a minus 12x. So 2x minus 12x is negative 10x. And then I have a plus 4x cubed. OK. so. Um, we want to know when um, the derivative is 0 or undefined. The derivative is 0 when the numerator is 0, and the derivative is undefined when the denominator is 0 because that will make the fraction undefined. But we can save ourselves some work if we think about what are the parts of this fraction. Well, if you look right here, you see that this expression we got here that is the same thing as what we had written as d of x. So I might just even write this as d of x. The denominator, everything else I'm going to leave alone here. The denominator is 2 times d of x, right? Because the square root of x squared plus 3 minus x squared squared is exactly what we had for our function. Well, d of x, remember d of x represents the distance from this point to the parabola. Well, the point is not on the parabola, right? The point is on the y-axis. The parabola is over here. The distance from this point to this parabola can never equal 0. So let's write that down. d of x will never equal 0. Therefore, the denominator will never equal 0. Therefore, I don't need to worry about the derivative ever being undefined. That's never going to happen. So I don't even need to worry about the denominator. Um, I only need to worry about the numerator. So the derivative equals 0 when the numerator is 0. 0 equals negative 10x plus 4x cubed. Well, let's factor that. What can I take out? I can take out an x, and I'm going to just change the order of this. This is going to be 4x squared, and then I'm going to have a minus 10. Um, I'm also going to take out a 4. It'll make it easier for me to factor x squared minus 10 over 4 is what I'm left with. Um, and let's keep going here. So 0 equals 4x. Well, this is a perfect square. This is actually, I can reduce this to 5 halves here. Um, x squared minus 5 halves, well, I can factor that into x minus the square root of 5 halves and x plus the square root of 5 halves. OK, so we have three critical values. And I am going to make a sign chart to figure out what is a minimum. If we look at the picture, we can probably tell what's going on. But we're going to make a sign chart and then draw some conclusions. So this gives me negative root 5 over 2. And this gives me positive root 5 over 2. 
So let's say I pick a number in this interval, a really big negative number. I'm going to get a value that's negative, negative, and negative. So this is negative. Let's say I pick negative 1. That would be in this interval. That would give me negative 1. Is, this would be negative. This would be negative, And this would be positive. So this is going to give me a positive value. If I pick 1, I'm going to get, um, what am I going to get? Uh, positive, negative, positive. That's negative. And if I pick uh, a very big positive number, all these terms are going to be positive. Therefore, the interval, the derivative is positive in that interval. So this is a sign chart showing the signs of the derivative. And therefore, that tells me that um, at this point, I have a minimum. And at this point, I have a minimum. I'm looking for. Uh, the minimum distance from my point to my parabola. So again, if you think about, we expected to get two values, and we expected them to be symmetric, at, as you can tell from looking at the picture. So this must be the point where x is root 5 over 2. And this must be the point where x is negative root 5 over 2. Okay, so we have, um, let's, let's clearly write out what we figured out from our derivative work. Um, and that is d of x has a minimum when x equals plus or minus root 5 over 2. And how do we know that? That's because d prime changes from negative to positive at those x values, which means that d is changing from decreasing to increasing, right? Decreasing to increasing. At a decreasing to increasing change, the graph must have a minimum. Okay. Um, Let's go back and make sure we're answering the questions that were originally asked. OK, so the two questions are, what is the minimum distance? And what are the points on the curve where that minimum distance occurs? So all we have to do to find the minimum distance is go back to our distance formula. And I can actually plug in both of my values at the same time, because x is squared in this distance formula. So whether I plug in a positive number or a negative number, I'm going to get the same answer. So I have d of plus or minus root 5 halves. And I think I'm going to get my calculator out here. Okay, So this is going to equal. The square root of, well, the square, uh, the square root of 5 halves squared is just going to be 5 halves. And then this is going to be 3 minus 5 halves squared. Oh, maybe I don't need a calculator after all. Oh, let's just save ourselves some time and use the calculator. OK, so here we are. Um, I have uh, the square root of. 5 halves is 2.5 plus um, 3 minus 2.5 squared. So the square root of 2.5 plus, just double checking, I typed it incorrectly. And I get 1.6583. 1 1.6583 units. OK, the second part of the question was, what are the coordinates of the points on the parabola where this minimum distance occurs? So I have the x-coordinates. The x-coordinates are 5 halves. I need the y-coordinates. And remember, we can use the equation of the parabola to find the y-coordinates. So y is 6 minus x squared. And again, I can plug in both the x values again, because that's squared, um, which is 6 minus root 5 halves squared is just 5 halves. And I get 3.5. 
So my ordered pairs are, my x's are plus or minus root 5 over 2, and my y's are, both points have the same y value of 3.5. So those are the coordinates of the points. And if I look at my graph, that seems reasonable. About 2 and a half, 3 and a half. Oh, not two and a half, sorry, root two and a half, three and a half, negative root two and a half, three and a half. So again, let's just do a quick review of what we did. We were trying to find the shortest distance from a point to a curve. We used the distance formula. We eliminated a variable using the equation for the parabola and simplified our distance formula. We took the derivative of the distance equation in order to find the critical points of the distance function. And the critical points occur when the derivative is zero or undefined. In this case, the derivative could never be undefined because that would never be zero. So we only had to find the points where the derivative was zero. And we got three values, zero plus or minus root, root 2.5. We did, made a sign chart to figure out where our minima were. Minima occur when the derivative changes from negative to positive. We found we had two minima when x is plus or minus 5 halves. We went back and made sure we answered the two questions that were being asked. What is the minimum distance? So we took our x values and plugged it into the distance formula. And secondly, what are the coordinates of the points on the parabola where this occurs? We already had the x-coordinates, so we plugged it back into the equation for the parabola to find the y-coordinates.